Welcome back to The Watch, and we are taking a look at Miss Marvel. Mm. I have some interesting thoughts, which I'm going to hold back until I hear your thoughts on Okay, look, I have seen uh, uh, almost all of the Marvel TV shows, watched a couple of episodes of Kate mm -hmm. Bishop, mm -hmm. it was boring, Winter Soldier, boring, mm -hmm. Loki, eh, up and down, but mostly boring, Wanda and all that, Wonder Vision. This one is the first one that didn't bore me. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Because it I was, liked it. Like, yeah. I I am shocked. Shocketh, I say, this was not <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I didn't hate it. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. I, I, it, it was nothing phenomenal. Mm. We're not talking about, I wasn't moved emotionally. Mm. There wasn't a moment without I was fully engaged going, oh, I, I, I was kind of moved emotionally at one part. Oh, really? The mum. Oh, oh, yes. The, there was a moment the where the, the mum and dad, like, but when I say, like, it wasn't huge. It wasn't overwhelming. Like, like mm. there are some moments that really... Yeah, yeah. Like so, that that, yeah, it wasn't phenomenal. I probably felt it more than you because mm -hmm. I am the same generation as this kid. And the mm. same gender. And have a similar family dynamic. Mm, interesting. So I've, I've, I had a lot of feels in this episode. Aww. Okay, because I could actually, yeah, I could see people being out to enjoy this even far more than me. I do... Sorry, but what part of Pakistan are you from? <laughs> Which know, I just, I just, Thank you, my friend. I don't, I don't see it. I, just, no, I can see it. You can see it. Is yeah. it the blue eyes? See, I don't see color. Yeah. Someone please help get me the glasses that help the color. Um, I have broader issues, and this is how I describe it. If you could take this show um, as a self-contained thing where it has no. I guess, influence or relation to external media, mm -hmm. um, I'll be able to have far less issues. Some of my issues is the fact of where this show sits in the larger MCU kind of narrative discussion, but also my perspective as a massive lifelong superhero fan. Yeah. Um, I have an interesting perspective on that regard, which we will get into. But if, and I can acknowledge this, separating from that perspective... I can see why people could really like this show and uh, why they wouldn't have the issues I have with it. And so I think in terms of people's takes on this show, it's actually going to be very subjective as to what they personally like and what they personally dislike. Because I have some subjective things that I really love about the superhero genre that this show doesn't give, mm -hmm. I just, I, I can't like it as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's because one of the clear things is that this is a show that is not made for me mm -hmm. or my type of audience. Would you agree with that? Yep. Yeah, well, whose audience, target audience, do you think this is uh, aimed for? Probably younger women, younger young women. Yeah. Me. Yeah, it's Claudia. That's why I was very interested to hear Claudia's views on that. Because you've actually mentioned that you would like superhero shows that are catered to, I guess, you, you know, your tastes. Yeah. yeah. And does this kind of do that for you? Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit older than their target audience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like on the edge of Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do see a lot of that. It's very classic, classic teen, um, has big, big aspirations, big head in the mm. cloud sort of thing. I, there's a lot of that. Um, but then it was very subtle in the placing in her insecurities mm -hmm. and like her deeper character. But in terms of like, we've already got a bit of action there. We've got you know, I, I like a good mix of internal conflict and action. So with the insecurities part, you're talking about like the mirror in high school, the that bloody gym scene, stuff like that? Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. And uh, being too short. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you, are you this often is, overlooked? <laughs> like, it needs to be acknowledged. This is a female, you know, lead character in a show mm. that is not actually a Mary Sue. She has insecurities, she has weaknesses, she's got things that she's not good at. Not everyone loves her. And this is actually essential she's for... She's short, she's mm -hmm. weird, she likes to draw. Can, can you stop, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this type of stuff she's is also actually... She's from Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, th these beats are essential for this type of show. Mm. A, a t like... There's, a, there's a, a reality, my wife has confirmed this and everything like that, is very common for young women, teenage girls, to feel very insecure about a lot of things, especially the whole puberty things, things are different, there's a lot of stuff that they're dealing with, and so if you're going to write a character going through this same process, of course, you, you would have to write them, if you're going to try get 
people to relate to this character, mm -hmm. you need to write them with insecurities. And yeah. to do insecurities, there are things that they're not good at and stuff. You know, she's getting hit in the face with a volleyball and stuff. I mean, it gave me some Twilight Bella vibes, the volleyball stuff, like because uh, in in Twilight Bella is specifically written to have heaps of insecurities, and she's really bad at all these things. And the only world in which she feels like she fits like, without feeling out of place is this vampire world. And some, um, for some reason, a hundred and nine year old dude is into that. Well, see, there is a couple of beats like, like when we're comparing the difference, right? This is a show that will appeal to young girls, I think, a lot. Not older girls. Uh, the reason why Twilight could appeal to, uh, you know, just women across the board is the sexy vampires. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's 900 years old, doesn't matter your age, you're like, he'll be into you, even if you're 16. That, um, <laughs> that started coming around in, like, high school. So, mm. obviously, I tried to emulate the sexy vampire look. And you pale and... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, hey, hey, no, no, that's a call. Some people love paleness. Like, like they flipping went crazy. For Shows them. I don't work the fields. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that called? Huh? Shows you don't work what? It shows that I don't work the fields. You haven't I... seen in Game of Thrones. They're like they like them pale in the capital. Shows they no. don't work the fields. I, okay, is that the reference? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I have to explain, but the comments told me not to last time. <laughs> so cut that one. <clears throat> Going back to the thing. Um, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, but the Twilight nice Vampire. And nice and pale. Nice and pale. So that I'm um, like, that's the interesting thing. Yeah. About um, it's not. I don't think it'll appeal to older women. This, but also having said that, I don't think this would this would not appeal to young guys a lot. Um, especially who love the classic comic book thing. And this is where I feel a lot of people will be very critical of this show because of its failing as a more stereotypical comic book yeah, TV show. Yeah, but think about it in the context of every other show that Disney has brought out. I know. But this I, is the best one This so is far. one of the most... But you say that, but there are move, there are movies out there that have a very similar style. You've got the um, kid who likes to doodle. You've got it. You've got mm -hmm. like animations on the wall, graffiti. It's very they similar to a lot of movies that are Kate that are about little boys. They do in Spider-Man. Not Spider -Man. little boys, but well, like no, Spider-Man has a big difference. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily directly related to the comic mm -hmm. genre, but it is related to a genre that has, in the past, been made for yeah. young boys. Um, but the thing is, if you were really wanting to attract young boys, there's a couple of two big things that would have been done. Tell us what young boys want, Shad. One, really, really cool powers. Mm. To me, her like the whole stretchy power thing has always been perceived as a bit goofy. Yeah, yeah, but that's why they that, changed it for changed this one. It. They changed it, but I think it changed still you got the giant hair. I actually kind of agree with you there, but I think they also saw that the stretchiness is a bit goofy. Yep. But this is why this character has not been popular for the young men for a while. The other thing is there is no huge resonating call to action or or undertone of heroism in this show this is very much about my teenage life well to be fair peter parker he like the whole point of peter parker like the origin story is that his selfish teenage life is immature and because he tries to do that he gets the powers and he tries to help himself mm. with it and the whole origin story is to subvert that and get him to grow up and say no with great power comes great responsibility and it's the, one of the most savage things where through his inaction that leads to his he's a father figure his uncle being murdered mm. that is soul crushing and that is deep that is heavy and uh, so though, like those are what I what I'm talking yeah. about when I when I talk about heavier, more noble superhero themes. To be fair, Shad, we know Spider Man's story. We don't mm. know her story. Maybe her arc could be she's learned that she doesn't need to try and emulate another hero, or she doesn't even it need to be, be a hero. No, it very we well could also be that. have the um, credit scene where we're gonna maybe yeah, she's yeah. got someone see, after her. Next this episode. is what I'm interested. This I would like to see her come face to face with the reality of some important things. You don't always need to do it, well, but part of the reality of superheroes is that you, like, some serious stuff can happen. You're putting your life in line with some of the worst people on the planet who will be willing to murder you, murder your family, kill... Like, Spider-Man is aware yeah. of that, which is why he wears a mask and he can't get with Mary Jane and tell her that is Spider-Man to protect her because he knows that out of the people he's dealing with... And, and this is the reality. If people actually knew the crap superheroes truly had to face... No one would want to be a but superhero. But think about this, Chad. Think about this, right? So that's that's Spider Man's story. This is a girl from Pakistan, and I'm. They have <laughs> now. There's also... a government agency looking after, looking for her. And which... they have <laughs> been setting up the 
you know, the rea- call to reality. She's being told throughout the whole episode, get your heads out of the clouds, figure yourself out. Mm. And that's what you've mm-hmm. told us that s- at the Spider-Man m- had to do, but he was more forced Yeah, see, to do at the so moment far. it's an unknown. What I'm saying is, based on this episode alone, I could see people criticising it because it seems very my world focused, where a lot of the classic superhero tropes has an underlining cause, a more noble cause, to explain why they want to be a superhero. At the moment, Kamala... Is, it is Kamala. 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 Kam- Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan. Kalam- her her Kalam- main Kalam- reason to being a superhero is because it's awesome. That is actually perfectly in line with a teenager. Kamala. I, well, I can believe well, a teenager wanting that. That's surface level. She might it have is. another reason why. Well, maybe, maybe. But the thing is, right, is... Uh, that's kind of it. She's excited she's got the powers, and then she's like, now I have powers, I can be a superhero and stuff. Where if you look at one, some of the most successful superheroes in the superhero genre, they have a really deep resonating theme or, or something really powerful to explain the question, why are you a superhero? From Superman to Batman to Spider-Man mm. and everything like that. And now Superman is the only one who doesn't have, like, well, not the only one, but he doesn't have like a massive tragedy, right? Mm. Spider-Man, Batman does. But his whole theme is uh, that he has this incredible power and he wants to make the world a better place through being uh, this beacon. He doesn't want to do it to... Because being a superhero is cool, it's all about helping other people. Yeah, but we don't know if that's why she's doing it. Well, like, no, no, the whole... Like, she's not see, doing anything yet, It's though. the first yeah, story. Yeah, yeah I know, episode, I know. No, right? like, the, the, a lot of this episode it, is... It's just a fangirl. She, it, she, she's a fangirl. She wants to be a superhero because it's awesome. Well, that, now, we don't know that, though. You keep saying it. Well, no, no. That from If I was to take from the context of this episode, mm-hmm. that's pretty much... She, she's emulating Captain Marvel because Captain well, Marvel like, is awesome. Well, okay, here's my question. Why do you like superheroes? Yeah, well... All the themes I'm talking about. There's a deeper yeah, see, resonance. There's exactly maybe, deeper resonance. You like the idea. I'm that not comes saying they can't. I hope they do explore this. Mm. But this episode, they haven't established that yet. My point and is, so, you don't just like superheroes because they're awesome. So it's a bit. I don't think it's right to say that. Well, that's why she likes it. Yeah, well, but um, that's what I'm taking from this episode. And there's nothing wrong with. If that's yeah, but this is the thing. This yeah, thing. But I don't. I think, I think it's a perfectly point. justified reason for a yeah. teenager to just say, "I want to be a superhero because they're awesome," but mm. that doesn't make this superhero as engaging to me because, more, like, the best superheroes have something far deeper to push them to that level. And I feel like and, and, and most that. superheroes usually, if you were to ask them, like, if they had the choice. They probably wouldn't want to be superheroes because it's a really tough gig in reality. Mm. It actually makes their life usually far worse. But they're making the Maybe noble sacrifice. Hopefully, they're making the noble sacrifice for the greater good. That's the whole point about Spider Man. Yep. His life sucks being a spider. Great power, great responsibility. Like, same with Batman. He, I'm sure he would have wished that he didn't have to go through this tragedy to realize how evil crime is and this is going to fight crime and stuff like that. Actually, Shazam. The movie, mm. the little kid, he gets powers. All he does with his friend for ages is just figure out mm. how to use them. And goof yeah. around. But we, yeah, you're right. And goof so around, we don't have. He does have an arc where he has to find more nobility, which is yeah. important. I think this is a really important thing, and I hope that's there. I don't think it's actually. I only have a peripheral perspective of the comic book character because the comic book character was it not charming or appealing or endearing. This is one of the big wins, I think, in this. The actress that they got to play her. I feel is actually really charming yep. and endearing. Charismatic. Yes. Charismatic. Basically, all the cast was charming. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've liked everyone I've met so far. Like, I, I, I'm shocked it came from Disney. And I was just like... I'm shocked it just came from this. I, 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 I'm wondering, why did they put a seemingly more care and attention to do some actually fairly complex character work, especially the family dynamics? I there think... is some deeper complex character work to get that family dynamic reflecting some actual... Stuff that felt real. It's like the, the Because mother... they've probably got creators who care about it. Well, that. It's also a symptom of the woke thing. With the woke stuff, you know, you've got the, the white male lead. You have to do the woke stuff to tear him down a little bit. That's well, a see, fact, right? This is where I get to some of my other dissatisfaction. Because, mm. remember, I uh, there are other characters that just appeal to me more by virtue of being cooler and having deeper themes and everything mm. like that. And those characters have been ruined. That's and my that, point, but yeah, they can't do it with this girl. Exactly, because it's they're going to be... I feel like may, it's cynical of me. I hope I'm wrong, but there is this feeling. There's an anything in my head that feels like they went to far extra lengths to make this character work yeah. because it's going. she's their poster child. And they had to do far less with this character to get it to the woke level that they want. Mm-hmm. But with the other guys, with the guys that would be usually... You know, yeah, I mean, because... It, well, they've done it with their animated movies as well, like... Um, 
Luca and Turning Red that came out recently, they put a lot of care into the world building and to mm. the cultural influences that have gone into the movies. Yeah, and this is kind of my point, but because when it comes to uh, more stereotypical Christian families and stuff like that and uh, the uh, traditional male heroes and everything, it's almost like they go out of their way to ruin them. And they them. do, that, but they don't go yeah. out of their way to ruin them. They go out of their way to inject the, the woke politics, the progressive stuff, mm -hmm. for certain reasons, yeah. and that's why they get ruined. Mm -hmm. Like They're not being like, let's make the worst possible thing we can. They go, let's inject this stuff. Yeah, yeah, toxic masculinity needs to be subverted so we can't have their toxic masculine heroes. And Lots here's of different a, things. Here's a, here, a character... She's not meant to be toxic masculinity, and so yeah. so and she's not, and, and she's not, and that's good. Mm. That's what's supposed you know to be. What the crazy thing is, mm. my family different religion, Christian, but I saw so much oh, yeah. of my family I, in it. I, it's, I, it's there are conservative values in this show, yeah. which I really appreciate it, and it's actually true with a lot of these cultural backgrounds because they have conservative values. Yeah. And it's what I find really interesting is that there's actually a lot there of are so many there are a lot of parallels between uh, Islamic families and Christian families for having conservative outlooks about get married family and all that stuff. Don't go off and find yourself. Exactly. I love that part. Yeah. And have a family. It's like the mother criticizing this this daughter who not the not the main character daughter, but this other girl this other that girl. went off to find herself and Canceled she's the wedding and she's basically she didn't want to. Yeah, and hooking up with these random guys. And yeah, there's that's hooking not up a, with random they never said that. No, they said it's like they're, they're meeting this guy named what a what a, what a thing. I thought she was just going Traveling. No, there was an implication she's hooking like they actually oh, okay. mentioned that she's hooking well, up I'll, with. I'll, I, that. I didn't catch that part either. I no, that. it's there. It's yeah. there. Um, and uh, comment down below. So, Kamala thought that's great finding it. I was like, but I like that the mother was actually they're having they're actually being responsible parents. Um, it's refreshing, isn't it? It's refreshing. Yet I would like to see it on parents, both. But also no trust from the yeah. mother. But that makes sense as well. Like um, the thing is right. Remember, they actually said yes to her going to the thing, but under their conditions, and that's where yeah. the miscommunication happened. Yet, the yeah. thi like, let's look at that execution, right? Mm -hmm. Because that worked really well. It wasn't the parents being necessarily unreasonable; it's them misunderstanding, not understanding everything. In actual fact, they went out of their way to try and make it even better. The dad <laughs> put on the makeup and everything <laughs> to try and do this fun special thing for his daughter. Yet, it was so misplaced with what she wanted, it, and. That felt real because it was a complete, true mis family miscommunication about, yeah. you know... And that. as someone who is someone's daughter and doesn't have <laughs> children yet, I understood it from her perspective how the parents are happy for to say yes to things under their conditions. They want mm. her to find herself, but their version of herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. But the, when the dad came out as Hulk, I'm like, dude, it's like it uh, Arrested fun. Development. <laughs> when he came, it, instead of Bluey's Green. Yes. <laughs> oh, I want that version of Arrested Development. Yeah. Make it Ron Howard. I was actually very... It was a cool Hulk costume, actually. I was, yeah. <laughs> and look, I, I love that the dad was genuinely... And she put so much effort into it. Well, mm. I love the, how the dad was genuinely hurt when uh, yeah. she said it was embarrassing. And it really showed the dad was doing something special for his daughter. He was ready to yeah. do this thing. To, and it wasn't he, that... to go out of his way to enjoy something his daughter liked he didn't he probably doesn't like it but he was willing to do it for her he was having yeah. fun and then he got legitimately hurt mm. and that and was that felt like a very true scene you know it was careless of her mm. but i could see those also, because kids are embarrassed by their parents and that was embarrassing and so of course i was gonna say but also she felt guilty afterwards yeah uh and so there was a, a surprising amount to uh, I really liked like, the family dynamic. Uh, yeah. and it felt realistic. I, I really like the mum. Okay. Even the dad, uh, sorry, the, the brother who says, I got your back and I'll go talk to the parents. Yeah. Like, they didn't play off anyone too much as a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is that small trope about the primary disciplinarian and the person who's involved with the children is the mum and the dad is played off as a little bit of a joke because he can't understand the technology and everything like that. Oh I appreciate they... Just pause for a second. Yeah. My dad cannot get Alexa to do what he wants. <laughs> Alexa, turn Alexa? the lights off. <laughs> Alexa. And it just never listens to him. I found that scene hilarious okay, because uh, I've seen the exact thing happen to my dad. There's truth to it. But there is a trope in Hollywood. Like, like, look at Brave, right? Where the mother is the one who is all about um, time to be responsible, everything yeah. like that. And the no, dad I, yeah. is the joker and stuff. I, with a lot of the Disney shows for kids, I... I really hate the way they just but, mm. portray the, the dad because they're always dumb and idiot and the, mm -hmm. and the kids are smarter and the mum's smarter than him and she always be like, oh, like, talk down to him. I, I, I do disagree with that trope. 
I do. I would like to see more. Yeah, like both the parents, like you know, time yeah. to be serious, and both the parents willing to, yeah. you know, play but around and play. But there's also that element of. Uh, for a lot of families, dads are the silly one because they don't want to be the dis disciplinary well, figure. No, no, th uh, to me, dads are always, the, like, in my experience, uh, and especially I'm the disciplinary figure, but yeah. my wife is uh, the one who will t sit down and usually talk things through, but I will be the, you know, the one to back her up and, and things. Mm. Um, dads are actually willing to play with their kids in a way stereotypically different to, to the mother because they're willing to take a bit more risks with the children and they feel confident to protect the kids under more risky things. And so there is some truth I see to, where the trope came from, yeah, but yeah. I would like but to see... Going too far it. and making the dad a joke, that actually is a trope that goes all the way back to Simpsons, um, Simpsons and then... Uh, well, married what? with kids. Married with children or kids. Or, yeah. but he, house. he didn't seem like a joke in this show. Not, he's, he's not too much, not too much. There was, I, I appreciated the scene where he was doing something special for the daughter and, and stuff. And there's a part where they're looking through the the security camera, which is really creepy, by the way. He's like, which is why you shouldn't have an Alexa or security cameras <laughs> inside your house. Um, and he's like, the daughter is in there. <laughs> the sun is out. The Beta daughter is, is out. Room. What do you, oh yes, oh yes, very good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a Pakistani accent. That's an Indian accent. I can't uh, do Pakistan. Pakistan separated from India. They used to be one country. Yeah, but they're yeah. very different culture, very different religion. They're well, they, very they, they different split, people. They split down um, religiously. <laughs> Shad, never ever ever compare them to each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I'm sorry. both will come for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> One will be like, thank you, don't no, come I, again. I can relate when people get Australia and New Zealand mixed up because we is like... No, no, this is like this is like getting uh, Palestine and Israel mixed up, Chad. <laughs> okay, okay. So don't do it again. <laughs> all right, all right. Um... I'm just saying they do have a shared cultural I, heritage. I appreciate the difference between my Indian and Pakistani brethren. I'm more respectful towards the Pakistani side. We can side. acknowledge a shared cultural heritage, can't we? I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> some of the guilt is showing. It's not my guilt, it's fear. <laughs> um, so, it, I find, yeah, really interesting. So, um, let's talk about probably the strongest positive, which was a bit of a surprise to me, was Kamala Khan herself. Yeah, like, she's um, charismatic. She was charismatic. Uh, and Maybe. look... I could actually... Hashtag relatable. No, <laughs> even I could, because even I could relate, because I am an airhead daydreamer, uh, and, you know, I... I oh, you, drew... you don't have air in your head. There's complex algorithms going constantly. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so, um, <laughs> I would draw in school and get told off, and so that felt very real to me. Mm. Um, and so... Being told you have to figure out your life when oh, you don't yes. even know what your life is. Yes, I get it. I, that's the one part I said in the trailer. I get that. <laughs> I'm sick of people being like... Figure out your entire bloody life. No, I'll roll with it. I don't. I don't. I can't and think. And also, ahead. the millennial um, counselor. Oh, cringe! Yeah, that was hilariously cringy. <laughs> but surprisingly, a little bit accurate. Mostly. Well, see, <laughs> I'm too disconnected from high school now to really have a point of reference because the high school stuff. I don't know. You know, like, like people in front of your locker. T like to me, that was push too extreme it's like even if they're jerks it's like oi it's my locker get out of the way yeah but you know? girls are different from 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 dudes if it was dudes there's always a threat of violence under every you know threat and <laughs> insult no i'm serious this is a fact no no the base, actually... the base level for every male intro that's why men invented respect is because violence is always the final option are so you, you keep respect do you don't know that should we give Say, a demonstration it's like oi i don't want a demonstration i'll be i'll be the guy in front of your locker um hey mate like the can glass you, is can shattering you <laughs> Oh, I need to get my locker. Can you get out of the way? No. What? She, no, no. I need to get my... Mate, move. We're going to have a problem. Uh, well, you get, are you seriously making a problem with seeing... Just look, see you're there. Move there. That's all you need to do. Out of my face right now. Don't you dare touch me again. And then after that... See that? That's where it goes. It literally <laughs> gets to a point where you literally reach an impasse and... Only blood I just, <laughs> This is all you do. You don't know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I uh, think I've maybe seen, like, maybe one fight in my whole high school experience. Wow. Mm. Well, see, uh, what we just displayed then is actually... It's the the, the world would call toxic masculinity, when it's actually... This is more important than people might think, because boys need to learn to be assertive and strong, because whenever something gets truly serious, this is the unfortunate reality of life. Violence is always the possible result, and we, saw it, we see it in breakdown of societies, even the modern day and stuff, and 
who's going to protect people who are less capable of protecting themselves? It mm. falls on to men. And so men do need to learn how they can assert themselves. Mm. Um, and part of that is actually learning to... I, if you just let this person in the front of the locker push you over and never do anything, mm. you're, that's going to happen for the rest of your life. And when stuff really gets serious, you will not be in a position to help anyone. It, would, is it more realistic that for her to say, all right, fine, I'll come back another time? Huh. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like it is. Because here's the I thing, right? I think we've gone too deep into I think this. women <laughs> fight. I think women fight more brutally than men. I've seen some girl fights. I Have don't like it. Have you seen... Church female basketball. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually, it makes me disturbed seeing women fight. It's no, 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 awful. no. There is a level of conflict that women and girls resort to more stereotypically than men, which is not violent altercation. It's usually uh, character assassination. No, but they do fight. Have you seen them fight? I've seen them fight, but they will resort to that less often than things that I feel is actually can be far more damaging psychologically. If there's a fight between men, it's a fight between men, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're honourable or dishonourable, or dirty or on the street, like whatever, right? But when it's a fight between women, it's literally two lions fighting. Claws come out, hairs pulled, <laughs> screaming, you know? The men are like, whoo, whoo, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm not, I find it like... Yeah, it makes me feel bad too. It's just... It feels wrong. It feels wrong. I don't like it. <laughs> women are meant to be delicate. <laughs> We're going to be delicate. No, no, no. I like seeing a woman fight, but if they're going to fight, I want to see them fight properly. No, I, I just don't pulling like... hair and scratching like stuff. Come like on. It. Take them to martial arts. Let them know how to do the beat down. Anyway, Claudia, what would you do if someone's in your way in the locker? Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I've... You punch him in the face. <laughs> no one's ever been in my way before. Okay. To be fair, you probably just like weave between mm. their legs. So, <laughs> maybe the school dynamic is more realistic than I was willing to give credit. I didn't think it was. Uh, I mean, we didn't see much of the uh, the school dy dy mm -hmm. dynamic, but I didn't think it was unrealistic. Well, this is one of the other parts where, as a result, this uh, character in the show didn't resonate as deeply as the classic superheroes do, is yeah. because her school life didn't seem that too terrible. Actually, she I wasn't mercilessly bullied. She was just ignored a bit. But we don't, she, maybe yeah. she just doesn't want conflict, she wants to have a high school. But life. this is the thing, one of the things that helps the superhero story is uh, people that do get bullied, and yes I was bullied at different times in my upbringing, I had to learn to stand up for myself, it was something that helped me become a stronger individual, honestly. Yeah. Maybe uh, she will, maybe next time someone's in front of her locker, she uses her powers and just kills But see them. then that's a bit more of an abuse of power scenario compared to if there was a contrast when she was bullied now, because that's vastly different, where Peter Parker, we saw him get bullied, preyed upon by Flash, and when he gets the powers, he Usually in every, uh, you know, Peter Parker origin story, he plays a beat down on Flash, but then he realises that that was an inappropriate use of his power. Because that's that's one of the greatest things about the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, because Uncle Ben pulls him up. He says, just because you have the power to beat someone up, doesn't mean you should. Mm. You know, what a great message. Because that's a message that young men do need to learn about how to use their growing strength appropriately. This is why I don't think it would resonate as much with young men, because there's not those messages that are more catered to young men, but it is catered for young women, and I can see why young men would enjoy it. But as a result, I could see why people who love classic superheroes might even despise this, because it's nowhere near what they would want out of a superhero story. And I think they would have less objection if a lot of the classic masculine superheroes were still being given justice. And then seeing one of the few superheroes to actually be given care and attention is a new one, and all the other ones are being treated like dirt, yeah, that's I true. could see resent there. Well, we might, again, and we've discussed why, but in terms of the other stuff you're talking about, the themes mm. that you want to see pop up, we might see them yet. Hopefully. I think we probably will. Hopefully. I'd like to see this character actually come face-to-face -face with the reality of what it means mm. to be a superhero, and she actually has to ask some serious questions about oh, am I really ready to do this and commit to this? Do you have the same problems with uh, Ant-Man? Because Ant-Man has the same problems you're talking about. A bit, yeah. Like, Ant-Man has never resonated with me deeply, mm. right? So I will actually be quite disappointed if this character is just, I have superpowers and it's so awesome. If that's the show, I feel they've... Uh, I think they've shown I themselves... I think they'll do that. Yeah, same. I think the writers have shown themselves to be a bit more mature than that. I hope they stay on that street. It looks like they're setting her up for a rude awakening because they keep telling her she has to grow up, she has to realise reality. I hope so. Her uh, mum, her counsellor. Okay, so 
I want to kind of uh, talk about, yeah, I hope they have that. And I hope it would be powerful because that's when some, the resonance, because one of the reasons why I love superheroes is the greater theme of what being a super, the message of being a superhero. It's that sometimes you need to sacrifice your own convenience to help others. That's the core of what a superhero is, mm. okay? It's not the awesome powers and everything like that, because in reality, risking your life usually getting beaten half to death if you fail the encounter, um, your failure leading to other people's deaths, potentially your loved ones being killed and everything like that, those are all really massive choices that are uh, profoundly noble for an individual to say, I'm going to try and fight for mm. the greater good, even in spite of all that. And I, I think love that, that message in superheroes. I think they're going to do that. I think I, they've I, already I, showed us a little glimpse of it's not all yeah. sunshine and rainbows when you have powers. I hope so. Because if they don't, then they don't understand the genre. Yeah. And this is why there'll be backlash. Um, and there was something else I was going to um, uh, talk about as well. But now, oh yeah, the other point of possible criticism, which I am not really in agreement with, and it's how easy she comes upon her powers. Hmm. There is a bit of, um, uh, I can see people say it's far more satisfying when the superhero has to do something to earn the powers. Hmm. But sometimes they don't. Like you know, Shazam. Did Peter Parker... Being bitten by a spider. I mean, you say Peter Parker... He earns the um, uh, the role in the sense that he goes through something else that he needs his to suit. overcome. He okay? earns his suit. <laughs> you could say that. And the power... Because he misuses his powers straight away yep. um, when he gets them. So... Iron Man earns But his having powers. said that... Yeah, see, Iron Superman Man... Superman doesn't. Iron Man, Superman, you're right. He doesn't earn his powers, but... He decides to be the superhero through a more noble mindset, but not to be awesome. But he builds his powers. There's some merit in that. Well, no, the reason he earns his power is because he, like, basically, he's a merchant of death. And then he actually feels the consequences of what he does, and he physically has to escape. That's Iron Man. You said Superman. No, no, no look, I'm saying Superman, Iron Man earns his powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah said you, you said Su his Superman powers. didn't. Yeah, 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 that's my point. Oh, yeah, well, okay, yeah, I sorry. I said he built his powers. My yeah, bad. um I misunderstood everything you just said. <laughs> going going back on track. So <laughs> there are cases when superpowers are given pretty easily to the superhero. I'm okay with that. I do want an arc of them coming to get the powers better and I appreciated that she has already made mistakes and like she has to learn how to use them. She's yeah. not already instantly Another thing that head was Ant Man's head was really destructive. Yeah, it just kept I just on hit rolling. It, 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 like, just, okay, it's done, no damage. It just just rolled to the other side, then it rolled to the other and side. Then it hits the hammer. <laughs> then we see a shot of the World Trade Center. <laughs> no, but then the hammer takes the girl out. I, I thought she was dead. Yeah. <laughs> so there are definitely silly moments in this show. I, I guess we would. So that, final was destination. Like, that was like funny, but in a shock value kind of I know. I thought the I hammer like, when it hit her Whoa. was like a golf club and she's gone for, for a six, um, which is a uh, cricket reference. I get the mix up. But then she's actually attached to the hammer yeah. as it's swinging around. One thing is when she catches her when she's falling, she doesn't know what her powers do, but she reaches out anyway. I, I actually, no, I get this. Have you ever seen something bad about to happen? You try and reach out with your hands like, no, How stop. How many times have like I dropped that light? And just been like, Whoa, caught yeah. Uh, so I actually, I actually really like the power being an instinctive thing that it forms a hand that stretches out out of okay. the reflexes. Like I just need it. I'm trying to stop. I think that works. Mm. And so I like that her powers. She she has ma she's made mistakes with her powers. It's not a complete Mary Sue. Now oh. I have them. It's great. We'll see how much she needs to train still. Again, I don't want this to be a superheroes are great. Superpowers are great. It's so fun. Show that'll really bother me. Um, and so there was another really dumb moment for me in this show. Um, they have the plan, which is like, this is the plan of us getting to the Avengers Con. And when she's thinking about it, it was fine, where I'll get this awesome outfit and I'll jump out the window. Huh. Um, and then when it's the real thing, and she's there in front of the window. She was like, she's not going to run and jump out <laughs> she the did. window. I thought that was funny. And then she jumps out of the window like, hang on, what? And then she just crashes into the thing. Which To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, she's only on the second story, okay? She's a small girl. And when you're a child, not child, but, you know, when you're growing up, you have more, you know. She's 16 and she has these grandiose ideas uh, of what reality is. No, but so... I feel like her body could handle it. Like mine, at, but then the bridge breaks. At my age, my body could handle that. At that age, I look. Not now. I'm not saying she should have died. I'm <laughs> saying, I don't know. I just winded, felt it yeah. felt comically, out like just. Have you thought about I this? I thought it was funny. Yeah. What I'm surprised about is that no one inside the house heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it was hilarious when they get to the bridge and they were actually 
thinking of jumping out. Because like, like, they showed her jumping out the window, and I was like, no, you're not going. And then thankfully. That's such a kid thing to do, though. Yeah. yeah. So, but look, if, those, if these are the points where I'm pointing out as possible places of criticism, the show isn't not terrible. Uh, as I said, at my in the beginning, it's not terrible. It was colourful. It wasn't for um, I, it wasn't phenomenal for me. It didn't have resonance and mm. and but That's it had a endearing and charming character. I think the actress cast pulled it off really yeah, well. Cast. Um, the the friend uh, which is easier. They, they already playing. You know that there might be a deep connection there. And I was like, thinking it was gay. He seems like the perfect friend friend zoned trope. Yeah, oh, yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. And so we'll see but what happens with him. They they're already setting him up to the whole time. They're already setting him up to be the tech guy. It's a bit of a trope, but guy in the chair. Guy in the chair. Guy in the chair. So we'll see if they do anything better with no, with his character. Zuzu. I think I know who the main villain's going to be. Who? Pac the Pakistani oh. government is going to find out I, what this. So I'm exists. sorry, I forgot the the largest criticism of this show. Mm. And uh, this one is unforgivable. I'm sorry. Her taste in superheroes it's is awful. terrible. Yeah. Like, because Captain Marvel is an awful character in superheroes. She, she should have chosen Iron Man. This is, the, this is where I could possibly give an allowance. She hasn't seen Carol. how much of a terrible person Carol Danvers is. She's only seen Captain Marvel save people. Well, we did watch her video saying when she, she abandoned Earth, but we don't know. She could be doing this. She could be doing that. She's just a fangirl. She thinks Cap Captain Marvel's powers are cool. She thinks mm. she has a cool costume. Mm -hmm. She's but she doesn't care I'm about. I'm pointing her. it out so people, if you watch this and you're not unfamiliar with the larger Captain Marvel thing, Captain Marvel's an awful person. She 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 physically assaults people for no good reason. She steals property and she destroys property. She is. Look, Michael but Jackson also, had a lot of fans. <laughs> Also, they can't just, like, change Miss Marvel's mm. hero character. Look, look, I, I get that she doesn't know, the, like, what, who Carol is. So maybe, <laughs> I'm just still, still awful, awful taste. Okay. It'd be funny, like, she gets, like, a, a leaked news report from the 90s saying, a uh, woman dressed in spandex suit steals man's motorcycle in broad daylight. <laughs> Another unrealistic thing, mm -hmm. they went to an Avenger con, no lines. They got straight in. Oh, yeah. It was actually a much smaller con than they were small, talking. It seems but still lines, still... Mm -hmm. I just and it's Avengers. Look, I, think... I appreciated that her outfit was still pretty dodgy in terms of just thrown together. At the same time, it's funny when you see cosplay. You see the the cosplay that isn't as great, but then you see cosplay that's like better than the film outfits as well. And yeah, so... yeah, but there's not much cos in the play, is there? If you what? know what I mean. No, I don't. I'm talking about Ethos dressing up as superheroes. Well, they had that kind of. Mm. Does the cos the, come in? But the thing is, you know that costume, girl. I said there's not much cos, meaning not much costume, meaning they're not wearing much clothes. Uh, see, you see, sometimes I do have to explain things, people, because sometimes people aren't listening. It just goes way over their it's head. It's not our fault if we're just innocent. To be fair, your mouth is probably above my. Head <laughs> I level. do have a big mouth. <laughs> um, just, just to point out, right, where they had the uh, stereotypical cosplayer that's not stereotypical enough. Not stereotypical. That was way downgraded. It was actually, a, but. The, the, the girl from high school that was not really the bully, but not... No, she was nice. She was she a was, nice girl. She was actually... But, the yeah. girl that defended her when the ball hit her face, she's like, you did that on purpose. No, I didn't. That was the girl who said, you did uh, that on purpose. Okay. okay. No, Which the, is accurate. The girl was the one who said, no, I didn't. Oh, really? I thought it was the nice one who she met on the stairs. The and one like, in she's... the hijab wearing the mm. skimpy costume? I thought, no, I thought that was the... I th no, 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 no. So you know how that was the girl that uh, they walked past her on the stairs? And, and she says, I like your coat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The girl That's the, the one in the I think that outfit. was a different girl. I thought it was her. But anyway, you know that outfit she's wearing? I don't know. That's actually a comic book accurate variant of Miss Marvel of, of Captain Marvel's outfit at one point. Yeah. And then and then Kamala Khan's like, she's not even wearing an accurate outfit. Actually, yeah, I know, but in the comic books though that look, if you're gonna say it, look, it wasn't actually Carol Danvers. If I remember correctly, it's not Carol Danvers who wears that costume. Another former villain took on the role of Captain Marvel during Dark Avengers or something like that. Yeah. And she had a uh, different outfit. But of course that's not even talking about one of Carol Danvers' Miss Marvel outfits, which mm. is also called Warbird. I think Warbird. they did that on purpose anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah. I know it was on purpose, but it, it's actually not canonically <laughs> accurate. It is for Marvel, DC, sorry, the MC, MCU. MCU. Yeah. Um, but anyway. That's My favourite cosplayers are always the Power Girl cosplayers. That's the best costume. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Really uh, great for fighting in. <laughs> well, well a sports... No, a sports leotard, there's a reason why... Uh, um, uh, there's a reason why gymnasts wear, you know, those things because... Yeah, because it's but hot. The, the female gymnasts wear it and the male gymnasts don't. 
Well, the male gymnasts wear it down to like their thighs. They wear pants. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You sure? Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, if someone wanted a outfit that was appropriate for sports, okay, mm. I'm not saying all aspects of Power Girls outfit <laughs> matches, mm. but the, uh, the stereotypical okay. superhero female outfit of the sports mm. leotard, I actually think fits superheroes fine. Have you ever seen high school wrestling? Yeah. They wear tights that are like up to their thighs or knees on that. So. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's so you don't yeah. have anything to grab. But in track and field as well. <laughs> <laughs> so those are kind of the main things that uh, stood out to me uh, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there's there one anything? thing. At the mm -hmm. beginning when it started playing like uh, some sort of, like you know how she opens the box and it starts playing that weird music thing? Like she opens the box to get the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, starts yeah, playing yeah, something yeah. like some music. I was thinking, oh, that's a bad theme. I thought that was her theme. I'm thinking, if they're going to do a Pakistani hero, do the proper like Islamic, you know, <laughs> chant. And then at the very end of it, they did it. And so I yeah. was, I was happy. Actually, they did. I did really enjoy the music. I had, I like that mix of techno and traditional. And they did have a bit of, I don't know what word to use, but Arabic mm. melody, like put into them. It's pretty, pretty cool. So in terms of I her... I liked the music in okay. general. Mm. Same. In terms of her getting the powers, okay, I think it's perfectly fine to have powers randomly come upon a random person and they're not a, they're not ready for it and they can become a hero or a villain or whatever. I think so that I don't have too much of an issue. But I do want there to be eye, as I mentioned. What I will say though, I feel and I hope there's a better explanation as to what this wristband thing is. Um, her aunties or her grandmas? Well, see, the origin of a superpower Grandma. is a great resource for potential plot, okay? Yeah. Like, for instance, in the in the actual comic books, okay? It's some missed stuff, well, right? She gets exposed to I, I don't know what they... I, yeah, I don't know what the comic books... But I was talking about, like, examples of super, superpower origins that ha can be tied into plot. So Spider-Man, right? This isn't actually just a random spider uh, that Oscorp super made. Spider. Like, in a lot of the comic books, especially the... Um, uh, ultimate um, uh, Marvel reboot is that the US government outsourced and contracted a lot of companies to develop a new super soldier serums to remake Captain America and uh, Oscorp was literally experimenting with that uh, with, and they were the ones who made the spider and uh, spiders aren't terrifying enough and, uh, and then powers. There is like this relation between yeah, I, I, like there's this interesting plot that can get unraveled then when Captain America comes around and he has this issue because like a lot of Spider-Man's villains um, result out of this contracting the U.S. government yeah. did as well, and so there's some really fun, interesting conflict that, that you can do to explain what's what led to these powers, yeah. and so I want to know where this wrist thing came from. Mm. The mum seems to know something about it. Yeah. It seems to have deeper ties to her family. Yeah, and uh, d is there a, a villain who, like a warlord, who used to have it, or is it connected with other things, other powers? If the Pakistani military finds well, out that's about it, Shang Chi. Shang Chi. See, the rings. Uh, I, I did not like Shang Chi. The, uh, just sorry, the way the rings operate, in Shang Chi is a, is a, is a thing, and they don't explain where those rings came from, and so uh, they they alluded to it in there that there's a mystery in the after credit scene. Mm. I do wonder if there could be a connection between the rings and this wrist thing. It's like it's a piece of jewelry <laughs> with strange like markings that give powers, culture? or same culture that made these devices for something. Might be an Islamic thing, you know, because typically like all these things are based off of some sort of um, mythology or mm -hmm. history legend, or something, yeah. legend stuff like that, mm -hmm. or even you know actual religions. Yeah. What do I do with Thor? See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we'll just have to find out. Mm. Just all right, so again, but in it. these are things that I hope that they will explore. Um, this is not saying that Miss Marvel is going to be great. There's mm. been a lot of times Disney they've brought out first episodes that ha show promise. Mm. Even Obi Wan showed some promise not in the first episode. Not for Oz, but for me, there was things I could enjoy in the first episode, and then it went off a cliff. Um, uh, and so this is just the first episode. We will uh, we will keep watching, and of, uh, hopefully they'll make something good for once. Of all I the shows, it up. yeah. Of all the shows we've watched, except for Arcane, because I was great. This is my favorite one so far. Isn't that surprising? Yeah. And. <laughs> See, people say we're only here to hate. No, we're here, we're looking for happens. good media. We have a good cast with a good script and good directing and people who care about what they're making. Yeah, just because we hate Disney doesn't mean that we're not going to give something credit mm. if there's some talent shown in it. And there we go. Miss mm. Marvel. Who Michelle our brother. But it seems like they didn't e <laughs> it turns they didn't even have confidence in it because they've buried Miss Marvel's release with K Kenobi. Oh, yeah, they kind of did, didn't they? Yeah, like, <laughs> they buried their, their best work so far. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, uh, and uh, does anyone else have anything to say about it? Um, I, mean, I look forward to episode two. 
Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, you think of desert dwelling person with magical powers, you, you know, it's it's Obi Wan, not the Muslim <laughs> lady. <laughs> I had to fit one in there. Look, look, we denounce all of Oz's racial look, stereotype comments. My Islamic brothers, and there is one or two in the Discord, they know that I... I know, it's all in jokes. Hold them in my heart. It's all in jokes, but people always think, that's a, that's a racist stereotype. Well, they can bugger off. I know, it's like, it's like we make fun of it, us being Australians for being Australians. All Mormon stuff we make all, fun yeah, of. Exactly. Anyway, thank all you. women, because we have one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there are good things that come out of media and that's mm. why you should always stay on watch.